Here is an example of a problem which we can solve using the divergence theorem. So we're given that f is a vector field on R3 minus the origin. So it's defined in every point in three-dimensional space except the origin. And the divergence of f is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus c squared. And we're considering two surfaces. So S1 is the sphere of radius 1 centered at the origin, oriented outward. S2 is the sphere of radius 2. And we're given that the flux of f across S1 is equal to 2 pi. And we're supposed to calculate the flux of f across S2. So to get started, let's draw the two surfaces. And I'll draw a cross section. Okay, so S2 is a sphere of radius 2. In my cross section, it looks like a circle. And S1 is a sphere of radius 1. And here's the origin. Okay. And these surfaces are given the outward orientation, so they're oriented like this. Okay. And I want to find the flux through S2, and I'm given the flux through S1. So how can I use the divergence theorem? Well, the idea is to relate the flux over these two surfaces by looking at the solid region between them. So let's consider the solid region that's in between these two surfaces, and let's call it E. So in equations, E is the set of all points x, y, z such that 1 is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 4. And let's apply the divergence theorem to this solid region E. So what does the divergence theorem say? It says that the triple integral over E of the divergence of f with respect to volume is equal to, and now the other side is I have the flux over the boundary of E. The boundary of E consists of the two surfaces, S2 and S1. So on S2, I have the integral over S2 of f dot ds. And the other surface is S1, and I'm going to have minus the double integral over S1 of f dot ds. Now, why did I put a minus sign here? So this is the part you have to be really careful about, namely the orientations of the surfaces. So in the divergence theorem, you have to orient the surfaces pointing out of the solid region E. Okay, now we're given orientations of S1 and S2, which we fixed at the beginning. So this is S2 oriented out, I'll say out from the origin. And this is S1, which is oriented out from the origin. But in the divergence theorem, the surfaces are supposed to be oriented out of the solid region E. Now, if you look at S2, there's no difference here because S2 is oriented going outward from E. But S1, the given orientation, which is pointing away from the origin, points in to the region E. So the orientation of S1 that we're given is the wrong orientation to use in the divergence theorem. So if you integrate with that orientation, you'll get the wrong sign. So you just have to multiply by minus 1 to get it right. Okay, so this is what the divergence theorem tells us. OK, and then why is this useful? Well, this integral of s2 is what we're trying to find. So we want this. And we're given the flux over s1 is equal to 2 pi. So we're given that this is equal to 2 pi. And then to complete the problem, I just need to do 
this divergence integral. So we need to calculate this. Okay, and then the answer will be 2 pi plus this divergence integral. Right. Um, so let's calculate this triple integral on the next page. So you want to calculate the triple integral over e of div f dv. And remember that the divergence of f is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus c squared. And the region E is defined by the inequality 1 is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus c squared is less than or equal to 4. Now, since we have all these x squared plus y squared plus z squareds here, that suggests that we should try using spherical coordinates. So in spherical coordinates, the divergence of f is simply rho, the distance to the origin. And e is given by 1 is less than or equal to rho is less than or equal to 2. Well, theta and phi can be anything. So in spherical coordinates, this is the integral as phi goes from 0 to pi, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and rho goes from 1 to 2, and the divergence is rho, and then we have the magnification factor, rho squared sine phi, and then we have d rho d theta d phi. Okay, so when I do the rho integral, Uh, I have to integrate rho cubed sine phi. The sine phi is like a constant. So I get rho to the fourth over four sine phi evaluated at rho equals two and rho equals one d theta d phi. So this is, this. if I take rho to the fourth over four at two and one, I'm gonna get 16 over four minus one over four, which is 15 over four. So let's just pull that out here. So you get 15 over 4, integral from 0 to pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi, of sine phi d theta d phi. And when I do the theta integral, I just multiply by 2 pi. So I get 15 pi over 2, integral from 0 to pi, sine phi phi. And if you've been doing these kinds of integrals through this whole course, you can probably immediately tell me that the integral of sine phi from 0 to pi is 2. So we get 15 pi. So that is this triple integral. And then remember, to get the answer, I needed to take that integral and add 2 pi to it. So the answer is 2 pi plus 15 pi, which is 17 pi. Okay, so that's nice. Now, a word of warning here. Let me show you the wrong way to do this problem, which will give you the wrong answer. So the wrong approach. is to apply the divergence theorem to the ball of radius two. So the ball x squared plus y squared plus d squared is less than or equal to four. So if you try to do it this way, well, here's the ball in cross section. Um, and its boundary is the surface S2, oriented outward. So if you apply the divergence theorem here, 
I'll keep writing in red to indicate that this is wrong. So you would get that uh, the double integral over S2 of f dot ds is a triple integral over this whole ball. Let's call it b. There's a triple integral over this ball of div f dv. Now this ball is similar to the region we integrated over before. The only difference is that now rho goes from 0 to 2 instead of from 1 to 2. So b is also where rho is less than or equal to 2. So if you do it this way, when you do the rho integral, instead of evaluating at rho equals 1 here, you'll evaluate at rho equals 0. And this 15 over 4 will turn into a 16 over 4. So you'll just replace the 15 with a 16. So you'll get 16 pi. And that's wrong, because the answer is 17 pi. So what's going on here? Why is the divergence theorem giving us the wrong answer now? Well, let's, let's look carefully here. So f is a vector field. And where is this vector field defined? It's defined on R3 minus the origin. Now, if you're going to apply the divergence theorem, the vector field needs to be defined on the entire solid region E that you're using. Now, when we did the problem the first time, that was OK, because we took E to be the region where rho goes from 1 to 2. That does not include the origin, so there's no problem there. But my second attempt, I used a ball, which includes the origin where the vector field is not defined. So this is not valid, because the vector field f is not defined on the whole ball b. This integral actually is not even defined, because the vector field is not defined at the origin. So when you're applying the divergence theorem, you have to be careful that the vector field in question is defined in the whole solid region. And then the other thing you have to be careful about is the orientations. So the basic theme here is we're re using the divergence theorem to relate the fluxes over two different surfaces by integrating the divergence over the solid region between them. And then you just have to be careful that when you apply the divergence theorem, you're using the outward orientations. If you're not using the outward orientations, you've got to multiply that flux integral by minus 1.